Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. We are doing our newscast in Washington, D.C. this evening. We are in the Capitol Building in Washington, D.C., as you can see. We are broadcasting live here tonight for the possible government shutdown. We will have a news report on that in the newscast this evening. We'll give you the latest information on what's happening. Let's begin with our newscast this evening. We have a lot of news to get to. First up, St. Paul's announces settlement for civil lawsuit by assault survivor. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. out the door when it matters most. For more than a decade, he's been right there, everywhere. And when American jobs are on the line, he leads the charge. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast, and we thank you. New at noon, St. Paul's School says it has settled the civil lawsuit brought forth by the family of assault survivor Chessie Prout. The school says the terms of the settlement are confidential. Prout went public in 2016 about being sexually assaulted by a graduate as part of a tradition at the elite boarding school called the Senior Salute. Owen Labrie was convicted of misdemeanor sexual assault and child endangerment in the case. The New Hampshire AG's office is continuing to investigate the school and its multiple allegations of sexual misconduct. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Driver in cardiac arrest after car slams into house. Police are investigating a crash that ended with a car slamming into the side of a house in Raleigh on Friday afternoon. The crash happened near the intersection of Haverhill Street in Pingree Farm Road at 2.07 p.m. A dark-colored Nissan Altima could be seen resting against a house. The car had heavy front-end damage and debris from the house was strewn about. From above, tire tracks could be seen in the snow cutting across an open lot and through a stand of trees from the corner to the house. Investigators said the driver suffered a medical emergency prior to the crash. A doctor and nurse who were driving by stopped and started performing CPR on the driver before first responders arrived. The driver was in cardiac arrest and was taken to Anna Jockey's Hospital in Newburyport. No one was in the house. No one was in the house was injured. The house was damaged but deemed safe for half a what does a government shutdown mean for Maine? Let's Nissan take a listen to the video. Now with available Nissan Intelligent Mobility Technologies, like automatic emergency braking, now on the Nissan Rogue family. Take on today. Get to your local Nissan dealer for great offers like this. 
Morning, Maine's two House members are reacting after the vote in the House. Republican Congressman Bruce Poliquin voted for their measure, saying a government shutdown is simply unacceptable, adding he's urging his Senate colleagues to do the same. Democratic Congresswoman Shelley Pingree voted against the bill, saying no one wants to see a shutdown, but kicking the can down the road is no way to run the government. Political analyst Mark Sandalo joining us now for a closer look at the potential shutdown. Good morning, Mark. Now, how would a shutdown affect Mainers? Uh, Christina, your mail will still show up, uh, the military will still be on duty, social security checks will still arrive, but if you were planning on getting a passport, if you want a gun permit, uh, those are going to be on hold if the government shuts down. Uh, the big problem is for people who work for the federal government, now Maine is nothing like down here in the D.C. area where almost everybody works for the federal government. There's about 15,000 fe civilian federal employees in Maine. When you consider Maine's size, that's actually a larger percentage of people employed by the federal government in Maine than there are in most states. Now, those people are going to be, most of them, without work until the government were to reopen. And whether they get paid or not, that's always an open question. Either they get reimbursed later, in which case taxpayers have paid for them to do nothing, or they don't get paid, which is obviously a serious hit in their, in, in their income. And Mark, we're also hearing a lot about immigration and dreamers. Why is this at the issue of the center of the budget debate right now? It's because the budget that Republicans are pushing and Donald Trump wants includes a lot of money for border protection, including Trump's wall between the United States and Mexico. Democrats say if they're going to vote for anything like that, they want an extension of this DACA program, which are for the children, young undocumented kids who were brought here by their parents illegally, but the kids know no other home. Now, almost everyone agrees that there's no reason to keep them in the United States, but Trump has said he's ending the program until Congress comes up with a deal. There's been no deal and Democrats are saying enough, enough, now's the time. By the way, Maine, California has a quarter million of these DACA recipients. Maine has many, many, many fewer. It, it's really, it, 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 we're only talking about hundreds, but boy, for those hundreds, it's, it's a pretty critical issue. We'll have to see what happens. Thank you so much, Mark. That deadline again, midnight tonight. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. We have all eyes in watching this here at the state capitol in Washington, D.C. Now let's take a look at your stock market and see how your stock market closed for this Friday evening. And here's a look at the stock market. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the green and went up. Oh. S&P 500 closed in the green and went up. NASDAQ closed in the green and went up. S&P 500 and NASDAQ notch record close as street shrug off government shutdown worries. Stocks closed higher on Friday as investors shrugged off worries about a possible Government shut down. Americans more likely to blame. <coughs> Sorry about that. Here's how a government shutdown could affect you. Let's take a listen to the video. Could have a major impact on millions. For more on this, we're going to bring in our chief national correspondent, Tom Yamas. Good morning, Tom. So break it on down for us. Robin, good morning to you. You know, we just heard from Mary and John. The blame game is on in D.C. about this potential shutdown. But the ones who stand to lose the most from this are the American people. Let's break it down. Let's take a closer look at this right now. First up, the American economy. Back in 2013, the last time a shutdown happened, it cost the economy $1.5 billion a day. Why? 
why? Government phones in some cases are put on hold. Now, if the government does shut down, two things you don't have to worry about, mail and air travel. We will still get our mail, and air traffic controllers will continue to work. But if there is a shutdown, the last time this happened in 2013, nearly 800,000 federal employees were without pay. More than a million delayed paychecks, including service members who were not paid until later. And also, if you're looking to get a business loan, if you're looking to buy a home, your loan could be put on hold because of those government funds that aren't up and running. Now, in case you were wondering, Members of Congress, will they still get paid? The ones responsible for the shutdown? Of course, they will still get their paychecks because their salaries are written into permanent law. And Robin, in case anyone out there is wondering, essential military services will still be up and running even if there's a shutdown. Oh. There's nothing worse than not having a warm coat. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that did it for the Riley King Newscast it's right here on the Riley King Network, broadcasting live here in the U.S. Capitol Building in Washington, D.C. Here's another look at it. And hopefully you all have a great rest of your night. I'll be back with Hollywood Dirt Report around 6 p.m. And then I'll be back with another news report as well. Goodbye, everyone.